Okay, folks, now we go into the, the greenhouse. Uh, since the house is built on solid rock, we couldn't go down, so we had to improvise a stairway, and it seems to work pretty good. It's like going down a ladder. And now Paul is going into the greenhouse, and we're going to go in there, and we're going to see a few more things, okay? We're going to scan this greenhouse now very slowly. Then we're going to take each part piece by piece, okay? Here's Paula, and she's taking a shower. This is where our shower is, since we don't, since we don't have a bathroom, per se, in the house. And so we just come in here and take a shower. It only takes a half a gallon to a gallon, okay? You recognize that algae that we extracted all of the chlorophyll from? Now Paul is going to start feeding it. And now, there's a reason why we're putting algae in here. Okay, the reason we, we have, we start with algae, like, like all good gar gardeners, you know, you want to have good soil. And so, like all good gardeners, we went to the original soils on Earth, going way back to the Archeozoic period. Uh, you know, near three billion years ago, when things like hyphia and, and uh, mycelium first, because there wasn't any oxygen around. And so the first plants that came up, you know, they had to, it was more or less a methane environment. And so we started from there. And the insects didn't come around until maybe the Devonian period. Well, and then along comes the Jurassic period. And here we have all of these monstrous plants that dinosaurs could eat. Well, and so what has happened here? I started taking some of our more recent fossils apart around the world. You know, the Miocene, Eocene stuff, you know, 40 million years ago. And right off the bat, what you do is you recognize that the leaves are intact in the fossils and you take the substratum apart, that's fun, and you find it's loaded with insects. Just trillions of them. So we immediately went over, we got, you know, maybe a ton of nothing but molds and funguses for our first garden. And, you know, so we had hundreds and hundreds of wheelbarrows and nothing but all the fungus and insects we could find. And so, and like Paula here, she's got this chunk of algae and she's going to plop it in there. Okay, plop it in there, the one we found yesterday. And so we determined that, see we tried to create every environment that has ever existed on the earth in here since we have total control and every environment that exists on the earth today. And lo and behold, we figured that, you know, if you're going to have um, you know, enough big vegetables around to feed, you know, Jurassic type things, big, you know, brontosaurs and stuff, you know, you're going to have to have a lot of uh, vegetation. And so I figured, well, if you create the original soil with fungus and, and moles, why well, you should have, you know, something, and we created the environment just like the, the Jurassic. And lo and behold, the first crops that came up were, you know, like six, seven, eight feet. We had lettuce that were, you know, three, four feet high and three feet across, and it was all built on hyphae and mycelium and algae. And so we've changed this soil over and over again, and now we've got a more, we're trying a new modern soil, and they don't grow near as good when you take out the mycelium and the, and the hyphae and the algae. Okay, as you can see, the original hypothesis, the supposition was true, that even though there was plants, Insects prefer their neighbors and their kin to eat. And so the insects ate the insects and they didn't bother the plants at all. And so we had, we'd put every kind of insect we could possibly put in here. And, uh, and we had to put a little bit of uh, diatomaceous earth in to get some big grubs out of the way. And a little bit of iron phosphate if we had any snails. And if you get any ants, just a little diatomaceous earth. But for years, you can take a look here. Uh, there's the, the plants are perfect and there's no kind of chemical or anything. It doesn't make any difference what plants you put in here. Uh, they just come out perfect. The whole thing, they just, no bugs, no insects, because insects prefer to eat, there's more protein, you see, in, uh, in, in eating animals, you know, and so they, were, they just ate the, and so the, 
the dinosaurs, brontosaur stuff, they had plenty of plants. Okay, in the process of creating all the environments, we've also taken hundreds of different kind of plants, you know, vegetables all over the world, and we wanted to see genetically which ones are, were superior. They could take heat, could take cold, because we had absolute control of this garden. And we got this thing, when we first had it, we put the greenhouse up, there was no shade. And boy, it got 160 degrees in here, and we said, let's just find out, because the earth had been that hot. And hot damn, we found plants that could live at 140, 50 degrees, and the plants that could go down, you could keep them frozen for days, and everything was just fine. And so what we did was we took the most resistant plants that we could find on this earth, and uh, we put them in here. They can take the heat, they can take the cold, and the ultimate test was, of all the plants, we just picked the ones that tasted good. And like right here, this is our, our herb garden, and you can see it's just a mass of just everything. And so you've got instant herbs, all you want up the garbanzos, we got beets, lettuce, kales, uh, and we had to make these kind of cages right here. Because some of the stuff, they started to turn into trees. And so we just let them go into trees and then we just pruned the limbs for all the different varieties of kales. We had one, I think it had 25 feet of roots. And we had one that was a, a regular tree. Uh, and they never die. They just keep going forever. One variety of spinach here. Now we've had to tear all the plants out just so you could see the... You can see the structure here. This whole thing is sometimes six, seven, eight foot tall. You can't even get into it when we come back from, you know, through. You see, when we come back after three or four months down in South America or Asia, and the, the garden will just, if we're not even here for a year, it'll just keep producing and growing itself, watering, and you never have to worry about it. I mean, the plants grow and it just keep growing and growing and growing. And now we'll explain will explain how the water system works. You see, they keep telling you that every person needs at least 25 gallons of water a day. Well, with this system, well, we do have a slight loss, so it's not entirely perfect. We have about half gallon to a gallon loss a day per person. But if you, with 25 gallons, well, that'll last two people in this situation, uh, you know, a, a near a month, three weeks for sure, and you still have a couple extra gallons to boot and uh, we get the 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 little gallon per person a day from the dew and as a matter of fact once it gets going you don't even need fresh water anymore you just put a, a tray of salt water or alkaline water or anything and it will just distill it right out so not only does it do you have a you you recycle and conserve water but you have just now once it gets going it doesn't take much you can use an air extractor and take it right out of the air. And this sucker was when we first put the greenhouse up. This is a polycarbonate one, but you can do it with, with, uh, with this regular old tempered glass. It was sucking water right out of the rocks, you see. So you see, this thing can go on forever. I mean, with just you almost don't need any water anymore, just that little bit. Here's how it works. After we do a wash, whether it's the, the, the clothes or you're washing your dishes or whatever, you just take and mop you the and then mop the floor with it. It's still pretty clean. And then you just introduce it and the plants just love it. You know, you have to be careful you don't put anything in there that's, you know, the plants, you know, it'll kill the plants because if they die, you die. Because this is your water system. Now, the root hairs pick up all the, the nutrients and the plant just pigs out on them. And what will happen is they will utilize all the nutrients in the food scraps and in your body pores and and you know in the in the minerals that are crunched up on the on the floor. There's wonderful uh, studies in Africa about you can double your crops just with the dust on your floor, and so they will absorb all the nutrients and thrive and prosper, and then they will perspire through the little stomata cells underneath their their leaves, and then it's all caught just by condensation on this polycarbonate wall. We've tried all manners of things. This seems to work the best, I mean, as far as the shape. But this was made for a, just for a laboratory. And you can see right here is a little trough. And this little trough collects all of the, the condensation. It goes all the way down here. And it goes all the way down there. 
and we're going to go way down here and we're going to see exactly where it goes and how it functions. If, if people are really Okay, you see that? It's just dropping in there. Now we've calculated that one drop per second will take care of all of the needs, cooking, bathing, uh, drinking, whatever, for one person. And so, uh, in nighttime when it's cooler here, because it operates on a, a differential, if it's hot in the day and cold at night, about 20, 30 degrees, this thing really chugs out. And so it only takes about two drops per second and you've got two people taken care of forever. And you really, you find out that you really don't need much water. You only need all three, four, or five gallons a day if you keep using it over and over and again. And we do tests on it, and it's entirely vector, uh, parasite free. But in order to make sure that we, you know, sometimes ants or something or little flies will come in through here. And so what we've done is we've got about a six foot carbon filter here, and it'll filter out any little bugs or insects or any whatever, and then it'll drop in here. Are you ready? Go ahead. After it filters in here, it drops through and drops into this bucket. Now this, the important thing is this bucket was put here last night empty. And checking it, it is now half full. And this is just from one night of dripping. Now I'm going to finish filling this one up because this was from yesterday and I didn't want it to, to go over. So you can see how clear the water is and how much there is. And this is just to finish filling this. I fill it to the top. Then I'll put the, the uh, screen back on so we don't have any little guys that get in. And put it back under because if you can see, maybe you can focus in here and see it's yep. dripping down. Got there. that. And, and then it finishes dripping and then I just add the cap back on and we're ready to go. We have one waiting that's empty and one collecting. This will be ready by tomorrow. Okay, folks, so you can see that the greater d the, the temperature uh, variance if you can get 30 degrees you know boy you'll put out you'll put out three four five gallons in a 24-hour period and if you just keep moving keep recycling and recycling and recycling you know we've been doing this for you know almost a whole generation and we've we've been using the same water you know you can imagine that water you just saw has probably been recycled through clothes socks uh, mopping the floors you know five six seven thousand times and it still comes up vector and parasite free uh, no viruses no bacteria and did you want to say something Paula? Uh, do you want to do your carrot? Hi oh, they show a little carrot here okay